Well, welcome to A Cloud of Witnesses. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to talk about flowing in the healing ministry with insight from John G. Lake. I look at this man and he saw an incredible amount of healings in his ministry. In his time period when he was at Spokane, more people were healed in that city than in the surrounding three hospitals and it was declared the healthiest city in the United States. He saw incredible miracles during his time and many um, healing ministers were uh, raised up and released in his ministry. So there's a lot that we truly can learn from him in terms of how to flow in the healing ministry. So stay with me. Father God, I thank you that right now that your Holy Spirit would come and open our eyes, see ears to hear, and that we would receive from you what you would have for us, and that the healing ministry would begin to flow, and that Jesus would be magnified, glorified. And I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. John G. Lake, of course, was mentored by John Alexander Dowie. He considered two spiritual fathers. One was John Wesley, and that really put inside of this man a desire to go and to preach the gospel. And of course, um, John Alexander Dowie, a man who saw phenomenal healings and was well known perhaps as the apostle of healing. John G. Lake seen great sickness in his life. His family was wrecked by sickness and disease. And it was through the ministry of John Alexander Dowie that his brother was healed, his sister was healed. And of course, this had a big impact on John G. Lake. And he became a part of John Alexander Dowie's ministry and part of the church up there in northern uh, Michigan. And it was during this time period that his wife would be shot accidentally by the child. And it's even in the newspapers where it talks about how she was paralyzed and in great pain. But this tragic event that the enemy meant to destroy John G. Lake and his family would become the opportunity that God would use for good. That God turned around and healed his wife and launched John G. Lake's healing ministry. It had got the attention of the press and as a consequence, when she was healed, many people knew about it and people started to come and start to seek healing because they were so blown away what God had done. And one of the things we'll see that John G. Lake discovered that God announces and proclaims the Messiahship of Jesus through the healing ministry. When we look at Alexander Dowie, one of the things that became the turning point was when the word that how you know about Jesus and how he went about doing good, anointed the Holy Ghost in power and how he healed all who were sick and oppressed of the enemy, for God was with them. We know that from John, sorry, Acts 10, 38. That verse became a fire in his bones. That same verse would become a fire in John G. Lake's. You see, one of the things I want you to understand is you can hear somebody else's revelation. Like, I'm sure John G. Lake heard many times um, John Alexander Dow is sharing that message of how he came to understand the healing ministry and heard that verse many times and it stirred something on the inside of him, but it was um, Dowie's revelation. And there comes a point in time where it had to become real to John G. Lake. You know, the reason that they'd gone to Northern Michigan was because of sickness. So he didn't fully get the healing message, even though he had seen his brother healed, his sister healed. So we can experience the power of God, but not fully comprehend. It's not a revelation to us fully. We can accept that Jesus can heal, and many people uh, God can use, but there's got to come a point where it's so real in you. And like John G. Lake, that revelation now was his, and it changed everything. And so now he is now walking forth with that healing ministry. And it's very similar because he was mentored by Dowie. You see a similar message. He has, um, he sees, I should say, the medical world as belonging to the devil. And he refuses to accept anything of the doctors or medical world. And this call is to walk and separate and walk away because you are to trust in God completely for your healing. So as we look at John G. Lake, I want to separate, I want to really pull out 
certain things that I help pray will help you and flow in the healing ministry, lessons we can learn from him. And I want to start with this, that one of the times he was ministering, and this, this young man he was mentoring, because John G. Lake mentored a lot of people, and the guy's praying over people that were sick, and he prayed over, and there was like a group of 100 people, and he prays for the first 20, they get healed, and he prays for the other 80, and they don't. And John G. Lake took him aside afterwards and said, what happened? And the guy's, I don't know. And John G. Lake said, on the first 20, you had your eyes on Jesus, and on the last 80, you had your eyes on the people. And you've got to understand, if we're going to flow in the healing ministry, our eyes must be on Jesus. Jesus is the healer, not you. And we must allow Jesus to manifest in and through us. You cannot focus on the person's sickness. We're not focusing on when will they get healed. We're focusing on Jesus. And we're just the conduit, allowing the power of God to flow through us, to magnify, manifest Jesus to that person, to allow the love of God to flow. And that's where I want to start. First of all, John G. Lake explained, the world is still waiting to see him as he is. Jesus the magnificent. Jesus the giant. Jesus the compassionate. Jesus the dynamic, the wonder of the centuries. The world is looking to see the real Jesus and to see a real Jesus. And he's looking, or the world is looking, he's supposed to see it through the church. And the things that Jesus began to do, it's in the book of Acts, he continued to do, who? Through the church. Because I no longer live, but Christ lives through me. And he commanded disciples to go. And he told them to teach them and command them to do what I taught you and commanded you to do. And so the call is for us to go forth and preach this gospel to heal the sick. Because in doing so, we reveal to the world Jesus, the Messiah. Lake understood that healing revealed the compassion of the Father, the compassion of Jesus. And he said, he was talking about the story of the leper king. And he said, he healed him. He, sorry, his love compelled it. That the love inside of him compelled Jesus to do all. And we saw this leper, I mean, can you imagine how distorted and how ugly and everything else and how repulsive it must have been? But love seems beyond because you meet people in sickness and they're, not, they're, they're it's in a, often in a disgusting state because this sickness is so distorted and wrecked their body and the stench and everything else. But love has got to go beyond that and see something different. And love has got to be the force flowing from you. And the world has got to see that love. And he said also, John G. Lake, he healed because it was his nature to heal. The multitude surrounded him. His love gushed forth like an electric billow. The love should flow from us, just like it did for Jesus. That it wasn't a love based on them being qualified. It was a love that just out of great mercy and out of the very nature of who God was, who Jesus was, to reach and touch. John G. Lake explained that the purpose of Jesus being seen as the healer is to be the savior of the world. He must be forever the miracle worker of the ages, the death destroyer, the finality of revelation of the majesty, power, and mercy of God. That God, you know, I look at the story, for example, of John the Baptist where he's in prison and he sends his disciples to Jesus and said, Jesus, are you the Messiah? That's really what they were asking. Are, is the Messiah yet to come? And Jesus didn't answer for a while, and he just continued to do healing and delivering people. And then he said, go tell him what you've seen and what you've heard. And how, you know, there was miracles and powers and people healed. That was the um, signature of the Messiah. That God, as we look through the word, that he came forth to heal and deliver and work with power and set people free from the oppression of the enemy. Healing was God's mercy in demonstration. It was something that Jesus paid for on the cross. I don't think we can fathom the price on the cross, not just for our sin, but the consequence of our sin. That's why so often when people came to him and the, you know, the Pharisees were condemning him, he said, which is it easier to forgive their sins or say, rise up and walk? Because they joined the two together, sin and the consequence and the power of mercy and love to forgive was able to forgive the sin and heal the sickness. John G. Lake explained, on the day of Pentecost, this power of attorney was made fully operative. The Spirit came, 
first legally, they had his word, then vitally he sent his spirit. Jesus said, go in my name. He gave them the name of Jesus, which we've been given. Go in my name. And we've been given the power of the attorney of, to use that name. Anointed by the Holy Ghost. That Jesus, who came and walked under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and did what he did, sends us to use his name, to represent him in the same power under the same anointing of the Holy Ghost. We have the same Holy Spirit available to us. And we're to go in his name. So you're not the healer. You cannot in and of yourself heal anybody. It's Jesus. And we must never take the praise or the glory for it. We must direct everybody and all things to Jesus. One of the things that God wants to demonstrate, the unchangeableness of God's eternal power, is therefore demonstrate that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that I am the Lord that changeth not. That God wants this generation to see that what he said in Hebrews chapter 13 and Malachi chapter 3 is true. That he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Many people want to mock it because the church is no longer reflecting it. And I wanted to say one of the reasons why um, the church is not reflecting it is because of the state we're in. We've lost sight of the compassion, mercy of the Lord God. Because there's a price to be paid if we're going to walk in that. There's a price of humility. There's a price of laying down our life. And John G. Lake explained, if you're going to walk in this, if you're going to truly walk in the healing anointing, he said, through this chain of successive abandonment to God, we discover the soul steps of Jesus. Every step was taken with reliance on the Word of God as the all-sufficient guide. Jesus trusting the promises did what he did in absolute obedience, that God, you will not fail your word, that your word is forever settled, and he settled it in his heart. And it said, he also wrote this, Jesus took the promise of God in the scriptures and permitted them to work out in his own soul. That Jesus, taking every promise, allowed them to be worked out in him, to be demonstrated through him. They trusted God, that God would not fail his word. And he walked it out. Because the Word, Jesus is the Word, and God's Word is forever settled in heaven. You know, as you look around right now, we're in an hour, what's under attack is the Word. And we must not allow ourselves to receive a lie, but trust that the Word is faithful. And it must be, first of all, established and settled inside of us. Jesus lived the Word out. And so when you fix your eyes on Jesus, you're going to see the one who is the Word. You cannot look at Jesus and not look at the Word because He is the Word. And even in uh, Revelation chapter 19, He is referred to, His name is the Word of God. So you must be fixed on Jesus and on His Word. And that Word must be living and must change you and transform you. One of the things that John G. Lake explained... Men receive Jesus Christ into the heart as one receives a lover. It is an affectionate relationship. Men obey Him because they love Him. Though they obey Him because they received Him affectionately. He has become their soul's lover. Everything we do must be out of this love. And I've shared this so many times. The key, the secret to seeing power demonstrated because we have the same Holy Spirit. But how is he going to manifest through it? It's through, in that secret place, surrender and yielding and allowing the love of God to so wreck us, consume us, and flow from us. So that out of that love that wrecks us, we simply walk in obedience because God, this love commands me, compels me to do. And it compels me to reach out to the lost and to the sick. This, this love that went to the cross for me and I see what the love did and I can't help that same love in me wants to do the same things. So let's start by this. What is divine healing? Uh, John G. Lake explained divine healing. What is it? It is the healing by the Spirit of God exercised through the Spirit of a man. That God wants to use human vessels. He's given gifts through men. 
that he wants to work through human vessels the Holy Spirit working in partnership to a yielded vessel surrendered to him that we're not relying on us we're not seeking the glory it's not about us but it's about a person surrendered glorifying Jesus through this vessel that God has put his glory in this earthen vessel to shine that the world would know that it's not of me but it's of Jesus and this love now manifest this world seeing that love demonstrated through me beloved the very instant your soul moves with your heart cry and your nature yearns after God it registers in the soul of Jesus Christ and the answer comes this love to now there's a deep cry this changes your prayer life because it's no longer a mental ascent it's not just something that mentally that I have agreed to or I understand but now every part of my being is in agreement and yearns because of this love God I want this on the earth because it's your love I want to see you magnified and glorified in the earth that is the heart reason for flowing and healing it's not about making a big ministry for myself it's not about glorifying my name it's about Jesus and his love flowing through me and it's about me loving him magnifying manifesting him it's important that we understand that when we look at sickness we don't focus on the greatness of the sickness of the cancer the disease but we not focus on that God Jesus is greater that through the cross he gained a far surpassing victory he triumphed over over all the enemy including death there is no greater sickness or disease than death and yet Jesus overcame the grave he defeated death and so we can now say death where is thy sting so if you can stand with that inside of you then what sickness can stand against the power of God we have a bigger Jesus and a small devil we must never forget that now healing John G. Lake explained now healing is not a difficult matter it does not take a bit more faith to be healed from your sickness than it does to be saved from your sins it's the same faith sometimes we think we got to work up this great faith but how did you get saved in a simple receiving and believing and we can receive healing by simply receiving and believing we've got to start to see Jesus truly as the healer and as bigger than our sickness and disease every time Christ speaks the word of life to a man's heart there is a divine creative miracle God wrought in him as he is a new man in Christ Jesus every time this word of life is spoken it now first of all it saves you but then it's changing and transforming there's a creative power going on in the inside of you and at the same time if you allow it it will set you free from every oppression of the enemy and every sickness disease that he wants to put on you and this is what I want to share we live in an hour in this country our people have been slobbered over with teaching that doesn't amount to anything and they wobble this way and that way like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed and God says let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord we live in this generation where you look at the preaching it's inspirational and it's all sugar-coated and fluffy but it doesn't bring or produce faith and that's important because John G Lake explained no real and final healing takes place until something occurs that releases the faith of the individual and we're going to churches and faith is not being stirred up activated people are not being taught how by faith to receive what is theirs instead you're being taught how the 10 rules of being successful in life and it makes you feel good but you go and you can hear that from an inspirational speaker when the spirit of light wants to speak a word of life in you that's living changing and transforming i want the life i want a word of life in me i want when we come and we speak over the sick what we're speaking is a word of life so we've got to be in a right church where we're being taught the word of life so you know how to flow with the word of life you know how to preach word of life so when i face someone who's sick there's there's a word of life coming from me by the anointing of the holy ghost and it has on it the life the anointing of the holy ghost and that's what's going to bring forth the change not me there's nothing in me it's not about me get get yourself out of the equation you are there as a vessel a conduit 
as a partner working in submission, surrender to the Lord God, there to glorify Him because you so love Him and you love the brethren and you love the lost. He explained healing is by degree based on two conditions. First, the degree of healing virtue administered. And second, the degree of faith that gives action and power to the virtue administered. There's always a go with faith. There's always an action with faith. There's always something. And so faith receives and faith acts and faith does. And you see that so often when Jesus would call them, he would say to them, now go show yourself to the priests or go do this. And so there was a demonstration of obedience that demonstrated faith and action. And so we need that living word for Jesus, that now word from Jesus in that situation of what they are to do to receive their healing, to release and cause them to walk in faith. Sometimes Jesus had to provoke faith in them. And so we need Jesus to magnify and manifest through us and bring forth that anointed word. That's the word in season now for that sick person so they can discover a real Jesus and discover their real healing and how to receive it. We'd understand that's a covenant right. You know, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, Jehovah Jireh and, and John de Lake stood in this, that we have a covenant not alone that he would deliver us from all sickness, but he would keep sickness and disease from us. That is our covenant right, and we should be preaching it and showing people how to walk in divine healing and divine health. It's your inheritance. It's the children's bread. And so that should be the word we're preaching, showing people how. So they're not dependent upon you, dependent on somebody else. They are standing on the word and receiving from Jesus and walking it out every day. Healing. I want you to get there's certain things. It is either administered by a point of contact through the authority of words spoken or by prayer. Three critical ways it can be administered. Jesus, as, as John G. Lake wrote, Jesus laid his hands upon the sick in obedience to the law of contact and transmission. Contact of his hands with the sick one permitted the Spirit of God in him to flow into the sick man. And a lot of time there is an action. There must be a point of contact for us to receive. You know, see many people in the healing ministry, you know, tell the evangelist, touch your hands to the television set or do something because there's, you create this point of contact, a simple act of faith of stepping out. We know, for example, the woman with the issue of blood, if I but touch the hem of his garments, I shall be healed. That point of contact. Yet we see this throng of people surrounding Jesus, touching him, yet not one of them received anything because touching is not enough. There has to be a pull by faith. There has to be a pulling and expect, expectancy. And again, we've got to teach people how by faith to expect and to receive, like the woman of issue did, and how then to get that point of contact to receive their healing. <clears throat> we read the story about Paul and, of course, the handkerchiefs. And John G. Lake wrote, The Spirit of God emanating from Paul transformed the handkerchiefs into storage batteries. When they were laid upon the sick, they suit their surcharge, the body, and healing was the result. That God could put the anointing into a material. And that material could become the point of contact by which somebody touching in faith, seeing it is from Jesus. It's not the cloth. It's the same as John G. Lake explained. You're not healed by the anointing oil. That's not what heals you. The cloth is not what heals you. It becomes a conduit and a point and way to have a point of contact, of touch, so that by faith you can receive. Are you with me? But we've got to make sure that we've spent time in the secret place so that we have the overflow of the anointing, a spill zone, so that it comes forth from us. The life, because you don't have it in yourself. And that's why you've got to be dependent, that you abide in the vine, and that that life you pull from, so the life is in you, flowing from you. So many people, you know, they pay the price in the early season, but then they get popular, and they then build it upon themselves. We must build a life consistently pulling upon, going after seeking and praying and fasting 
and yielding and surrender so that life's in us and flows from us and we recognize that it's Him. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that we're expanding His kingdom and not our own. I then said the second thing was words of authority. We discover in the Word several stories, there's a centurion, of course, that came to Jesus and said, you know, he wanted his servant healed. And they said, yes, the servant is worthy. And Jesus said, I'll come. And he said, no, 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 I'm a man under authority, and I say to this man, go, and he does, and this man, come. And he said, just say the word. We also discover another account where Jesus healed the multitudes by a word. Because there was life in the words. Because remember, God created the heavens and the earth by the word. His word will not return to him void. And when his word can flow from us, we preach the gospel under the anointing. God using a human vessel to preach the gospel, that anointed Holy Spirit on that word can so touch a heart as to bring him into the kingdom of God. Most glorious, incredible miracle. God working with a human vessel, speaking a word. God working with a human vessel, yielded the same anointing on it, can speak forth the word that can heal somebody, deliver them and set them free. As John G. Lake said, to the needy, distance is, distance is no barrier. When we get hold of this, that we can so speak, distance is no barrier. And God is not confined to methods. And God's not limited or restricted. But God can so take a frail human vessel and take our words and anoint them. I often look, you know, you preach a message and you talk afterwards to the people. And I sit down there and I have all this message inside of me and I, I, what I tend to get across to the people. And they tell me afterwards what they got out of it. It's like, how could you possibly have got that? That's not even remotely, and, and it never crossed my mind. But the Holy Ghost spoke to them, and now we're the right word to them, using my mouth, using my words. And the same way God can use us, and if we will yield to Him, and it starts in the secret place of surrender, of knowing Him. And when I know Him, the intimacy of the Lord is with those that fear Him, and those that know Him shall do great exploits. I know him in the secret place. I don't know him because I've heard somebody preach about him. I know him because I go and get real and I live the word out. I live what I've heard preached out. And I go and I get it in the secret place. And I hunger and I thirst after him and after his righteousness. And I seek his face because the value of what I'm desiring is so great. If you see magnifying, manifesting Jesus to a world of need, so valuable, you will spend the time in the secret face, seeking his face, crying out to him, letting him use you, yielding to him, so that he can manifest through you. Then we talk about, as John G. Lear wrote, then there is prayer such as in James chapter 5. He said the prayer, he said the oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit in that prayer. And he also said, divine healing through prayer is as old as the race of men. And he explained how um, God, throughout the Old Testament, through prayer, would heal people. It's not, God has always used prayer. God has used prayer of people, stand the gap for themselves or for another to heal and deliver people. As we cry out and seek his face, and we can stand in the gap for our brethren. If God could use the church, cry out for Peter to deliver him in prison, then God can use the prayers of his people to deliver those elsewhere from all kinds of oppression. I think we've lost the power of standing the gap for one another. I hear so many people when someone fails to get their healing that it's their lack of faith and we have this judgmental critical spirit. But look, you know, you see the one man that was unable to walk. He was unable in and of himself to go get the healing. And so his friends, in faith, took him. And Jesus said, seeing their faith, not the man, but theirs. And sometimes I can run to the battle myself, and like David, and overcome the giant. But sometimes, like David, the second time he faced the giant, somebody else had to run for him. And there's a time, there's seasons where we need other people to step in the gap and, and pray and, and, and intercede for us, to cry out for us, to get faith for us. And John G. Lake explained in this situation, if you don't have enough faith and you're struggling, you've been praying, you haven't got it, 
Come to the elders. Come to the elders. Let the elders now pray for you. Let them stand in the gap for you. And you will receive your healing. And if you commit any sin, you will be forgiven. Hallelujah. He explained this, you know, because we've got to understand the power and importance of praying, right praying. And he said, believing prayer, because it must be prayer done in faith. Remember that. Believing prayer is a committing, an intelligent committing of yourselves to God, and your mind is stayed in God, and your heart is stayed in God, and you're walking in God. This is a prayer where I'm surrendered, yielded. You don't get there just because you want to. This is a lifestyle commitment that's going to take time spent in the Word, spent in the secret place, crying out, yielded, and getting to know God, and letting the Holy Spirit expose you, kill you. We must not come to a place where we're found naked, unclothed, but we are clothed with the very life of the Holy Ghost all over us, and that is we've spent time with him in the secret place god wants to show to this world that he is the messiah he has sent us forth to go preach this gospel and to heal the sick and i pray that the boldness of the holy spirit would come upon you and that you would move because if you are watching this video then something in the inside of you is stirring you to go and pray over the sick and what a powerful thing to demonstrate the love of god that he has for the sick that he has met that need and to reach that person for Jesus, whether it's a believer and to see them healed, or the lost brought into the kingdom and discover that Jesus is the Savior and the healer, and that he paid a full price on the cross, that they can experience the power of God, and that Jesus is demonstrated and magnified as the Messiah through the preaching of the gospel and through the healing of the sick. Let us fulfill our commission. Let us occupy till, his, till he comes. So lay hold of this message. Go into the Word and get it for yourself. Begin to study the healing promises and let them be permitted to work themselves out in you. It's important that we get it and we begin to walk this thing out and that we spend the time successfully surrendering more and more so that we become yielded vessels. Learn and get the Word of life. Let it be alive in you so that you preach a Word of life that ministers life, that causes something to just suddenly come alive inside of They see that Jesus is the healer and that it causes them to understand how to step forth in faith and what to do to receive all God has. Amen. And then you can walk with authority knowing that you have the power of the name of Jesus. And that in the spiritual realm, you've got a place of authority established in Him because you're found in Him. Amen. And you've come to the overflow zone where the anointing of God flows from you into handkerchiefs and other things that you can now reach more people. And you are a person sold out in prayer. And people know and they fear. You know, you think of Knox, that Mary, Queen of Scots, feared that man's prayers more than anything. People should fear your prayer because they should be effective. The fervent prayer of the righteous men. It's not just, I should say, it's not the, it's the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous men. So let your prayer be effective and fervent. Amen. Well, be blessed. Thank you for watching. And I pray this message truly stir you, inspire you, provoke you, challenge you, edify you. In the precious and glorious name of Jesus, may Jesus be magnified and blessed. Thank you, in Jesus' name.